Oh yeah, friends and fam. Happy holidays and welcome back to another episode of Captain Coleslaw Outdoors with yours truly. I want to show you a couple things today because we got something pretty interesting going on on this fine December afternoon. So first of all, I want you to check this baby out. So this goose is actually a goose I got mounted from a pond, very close to the pond you watched us hunt the other day. It has a salt and peppery head, a genetic condition known as partial leucism. It's the same phenomenon which results in albinism. So this goozer is a rarity, genetically speaking, a very cool bird. The other thing about this bird that is really cool is it's a migrant. And I know it was a migrant because in the hunt where I shot this bird, it was over a very similar setup as what you saw the other day, and they had no hesitation to come into the decoy whatsoever. They were sold on the game. And that is part of the predictability of vulnerable migratory waterfowl. They are on the move, they're traveling large distances, and they can't settle to be too safe. If they need to sit, if they need water, if they need food, if they need a roost, they're going to take advantage. And we were able to use that against this bird who came from who knows where. Could have been Canada, could have been the Arctic Circle, could have been the Western United States, like the Dakotas. Who knows how it got to Pennsylvania, but it was a very cool hunt. And talk about exploiting the vulnerability of waterfowl during this migratory season comes the second thing I want to show you. Check this out. For the first time in a long time, we've got snow we don't know what to do with. They're calling for roughly 12 inches of snow in the next 12 hours. That's unheard of in the last five or six years here in Pennsylvania. And what that means is vulnerable waterfowl moving ahead of that front. It could be ducks, it could be geese, it could be all kinds of different birds, but we're going to use that vulnerability against them today in a quick impulse river hunt. So Grandman Glenn and I are going to go out and we're going to try to kill some ducks and geese because they're both in season right now. Pinnacle! And we're going to try to bring back some waterfowl for you guys. And the reason we're hunting rivers goes back to this theme of winter vulnerability that the migratory birds put themselves through. When the weather gets sub-freezing, all the ponds, bays, lakes, and little ecosystems that these birds roost in, hide in, and feed in get locked up in ice. And those birds need some sort of open water in order to do those things I just mentioned. And rivers don't freeze up. So the flowing current keeps those rivers open and they attract all kinds of waterfowl, whether they be resident birds, migrants taking a break, or any other group of birds in between. We're gonna use the river and hopefully exploit some migratory birds in action, ducks or geese. We haven't killed a mallard for you here yet. It's something I really wanna do. But we'll take goosers, we'll take mergansers, we'll take other species of puddle ducks, we're not going to be picky. This could be a really stupid idea, or it could be a really effective idea. At any rate, we're going to give her a go. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. <laughs> Boys and girls, what on earth are we getting into today? This is all Glenn. Glenn's got the decoys, Glenn's got the blind. I've got a car covered in snow, but I love killing ducks. Uh, keep the truck and four-wheel drive on a day like today. This is perfect waterfowling weather, but oh my gosh, it did a little bit rough. I'm not gonna lie, the weather is so rough that if I wasn't hunting three minutes away from the house, less than a quarter of a mile, I wouldn't go. Beautiful weather, 
But you gotta be smart, kids. Unless you have a perfect opportunity to get out. Where your safety is not compromised, don't risk it. This is a very localized hunt. The one we're gonna take advantage of simply because it's right here. No risk. Or very low risk. What do you need me to do? Uh, I figure if you want to throw your stuff in the sled, I'll throw the blind in there. And then... I figure you don't need a whole, whole lot. No, there's not much in here. Oh, yeah, look at that. I don't need a dragging harness. Is there a rope on it? Yep. Perfect. We're going to kill him today. <laughs> if we don't do this, it's going to be one hunt where I leave kind of like... Upset. Upset and it's like, why did I do this? I'm kind of glad that we just are hunting in the snow. Yeah, these birds are gonna be so disoriented. I bet if we just did almost like a like a flight sequence, like I honk, you honk, I honk, you honk, two different calls, two different birds, and then just get real excited. Yeah. I bet we get birds picking up, especially when it starts to get dark oh, and they're yeah. trying to figure out what the hell to do for this. For yeah, because they haven't had to sleep on the river yet with locked up ponds and stuff and. They're already starting to freeze over, so. Yesterday, I was coming by through for work, maybe 75 yards down, there's probably about a dozen of them. Yeah, I could hear them below my house this afternoon. Probably the same birds. And they've been going up to the corn up here. I just heard one. I thought I heard one. They're, oh, they're up. There's one right there. Solo. I have a feeling after it's going to be this <laughs> afternoon, he's looking for more geese. It's a little too packed. We just need to find the right place to be. Oh, there's ducks right there. Those are hoodies. Hooded mergansers. That's all I needed to hear. Well, it looks like there's a decent bank here. Yeah, it's flat and rocky. It'd be yeah. perfect setup. What do you think, Captain? I was gonna think, put our deeks right there, yep. right in that eddy. We can put our blind right under the tree a little bit. Won't stand out too bad. It'll be completely hidden until the birds plane down to us because the wind is blowing upstream. So they're gonna come in face first to land. They'll cross our faces right there. And our blind, our big brown rectangle will be concealed under that crap. It'll be a white rectangle. It'll be a death tangle. Let's set her up. All right, grand man, what's the plan here? What do we got? What are we trying to do? Half dozen mallard floaters, half dozen goose floaters. Kill some geese here on the river. Birds want to be on the river. Ponds are starting to freeze up. Big, big cold front coming in. Juicy day. Juicy day. I think we're going to let them have it. We might have to call a little bit too, just uh, you know, let those disoriented birds know there's a good thing going over here and then when they come, yeah, when they come to party, oh, we'll celebrate. Flying low to the water today, low visibility. That we're gonna good, for, good for us. Good for us, bad for them. Yep. But we better keep our eyes peeled because we only got two hours, so it's gonna happen quick. We get caught with our pants down. Yeah. Metaphorically. All right. Be good. Time to party.
you here. I swear that's just some quacking. I'm almost like 90% sure. Let me give him the. It was ways down there, but it just sounded like some quacking. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Every time somebody has told me about the weather, I'm like, good, we need it. <laughs> Just like blurts. World's turmoil right now. It. Oh my god, a mallard. Can I shoot him? Let me get him again. Nah. Yes! Watch it, it's kind of deep there. Want me to get the kayak? Is the paddle in there? I'm on him, dude. My first Milardo. Yes. Oh my god, first mallard in the snow, are you joking? They're freaking gorgeous. He's got a triple curl! Oh my god, I want the whole thing, dude. Dude, I almost had him. And then I saw him once he dropped off. Oh my gosh. Nice. Oh, triple curl? I'm halfway to a limit. Oh, I'm freaking stoked. Holy crap. He did it right into the deke, stayed low to the water. All right, let's get out of here and do it again. Give me a thumbs up if you like Milardos in the snow, yeah! Geese are getting up, geese are getting up. Yep, yep. We're gonna land all. Let them, let them do. Oh yeah, get your gun ready.
her head down. Let them swim in. Keep your head down. Wait. Oh my god. Well, if that ain't the coolest thing I've ever seen. Well, that's just slightly outrageous. They hate us. They hate us. What you can do. They loved it and then they hated it. It's the roost. Oh my god. It's a river roost though. Dude, that was exciting. That was, I mean, yeah, we was... decoyed all those birds. Well, I think us calling got them on the water for sure. So we, yeah. we decoyed them, just not, not within range. No, but we worked them. It was still fun to see. Absolutely. It was worth it. There was probably what, 80 birds? Oh, easy. Total. Easy. Plus more downstream we were hearing that they're fighting with now. Yes, sir. <laughs> what was that? It's freaking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we're a bunch of freaking kids out here in the snow. Playing in the snow, sled riding our way into the spot. Shooting one <laughs> duck. <laughs> Dude. And having a ball. One green head in Pennsylvania. Two minutes from the buddy. I know. Anyone else trying to go out today couldn't do it because they would literally get slid off the road. We hunted when it was like 75. I enjoyed it, but I was like, man, if we kill a bird, I want to clean it like right now. This is a hunt we did earlier in the year, but this is like days we dream of. Yeah, right. You know. Killed the first Milardo of my waterfowling career. Successful waterfowl winter hunt. Thanks for watching this episode of Cap Coleslaw Outdoors. Like and subscribe. Until next time, shoot straight. Stay strong. Head down, eyes up, and that's it. We'll see you on the next one. to shooting light next time. Mayday! Mayday! Mayday!